Hi, and welcome back to this channel. It's been a while since I posted a video. I've been putting together a couple different sets of tutorials that are gonna cover spans and the SpanCat model and Spacey, and I've also been putting together this new textbook for Intermediate Python. The idea behind this textbook is that it gets you up and running with some of the key, uh, more advanced functions that you might want to encounter later on in your Python career. In this video, we're gonna be covering the map function, everything that you need to know about it, when to use it, how to use it, and also why you should consider using it. And if you want to follow along, you can go ahead and on the textbook, which is intermediate-python.pythonhumanities.com. It'll be linked in the description down below. You can go ahead and follow along. We've already done the enumerate on this channel and zip functions on this channel. And in this video, we're covering the map function. All the code that I'm gonna be covering in this video can be found here. Underneath the live coding section, which will appear at the bottom here, you can find the code from this actual video, but it will follow very closely this entire tutorial. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is the map function? Well, the best way to really understand what it is is to just jump right in and see how it works. And most importantly, see how it replaces more verbose or longer code. Now, everything that you can do with the map function can be done with usually for loops in Python, but what we're gonna see is why you might wanna consider using it and learning about it. So what we're gonna be working with to demonstrate this are the first four lines of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. So once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary, etc. And what we wanna do is our problem that we want to solve is we want to try to isolate how many words appear in each line and then print those off. Very simple problem, but it demonstrates very well the utility of the map function. So in order to do that, we might wanna just create an empty list. Let's call this lengths. Not a great name, but that's what we're gonna call it. And we can iterate over each line. So for line and lines, uh, for line and lines, let's go ahead and just print off line. And I'm gonna go ahead and execute this cell and we see everything printed off just fine. And I'll zoom this in just a little bit for you. So we have each line. Well, how can we grab the words? Now, typically you'd wanna use something like Spacey or an NLP library to isolate through tokenization all the different words in the text. But we're just gonna use the simple split function for our purposes. So one of the things I could do is I could say print line dot split which will print everything off at the actual white space by default. And if we do that, we see we have everything printed off as you'd expect. This is all kind of more beginner Python. So what we can do is we can append this length of this split item into our lengths. So we can say lengths.append, and we can say append the length of the line.split. And let's go ahead and comment each of these out now and simply print off lengths. And when we do that, we've got the lengths of each of our lines. So we've got 11, 10, 10, and 11. This is fantastic, but we can do something a little bit better. Um, we can use the map function here. The map function lets us do all of this in just a couple lines of code. So we want to create a function, essentially. This function is going to be one of the things that we pass to the map function, which is going to map a sequence. So things like lists, sets, and strings, it'll map them to a function and return the result for us as a generator. Let's see what this looks like in practice. So we're gonna call this get lengths. And this is going to take essentially just one argument. This is going to be our actual lines. And you'll notice if you scroll up to our actual line, you'll notice that we actually have a slightly different function name here. That's okay for our purposes. So we're gonna pass in just a single line. Now the goal here is to take in this one single index of our sequence. So in this case, the collection of lines, each index or each sequence or each index in the sequence would be an individual line in the list. And our goal is to do exactly what we just did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna return the length of line dot split. So in just one line, we're just doing a simple return function. Once we have that function loaded up in memory, we can now use the map function on it. So let's call this lengths two, and we're gonna do map. Now map is a built-in Python function. This means that you don't need to pass in any, any uh, download any libraries, you don't need to install any libraries, you don't even need to import anything. It's already gonna be available to you. The first thing that you wanna pass is the name of the function that you want to use. Do not use open and close brackets here, just list the name of the function. The next thing that you wanna pass are the sequence, or is the sequence that you wanna to pass to that function. So the thing that needs to have the action done to it. In our case, this is the collection of lines. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we can print off lengths too. Now the output might not be what you're expecting here. What we're looking at here is actually a generator. 
Later in this uh, series, I'm gonna have a whole video on generators that explains what they are, why you wanna use them, and how to work with them. For now, just understand that they are an efficient way to store things in your computer's memory. One of the things that we can do to get the data inside of a generator is we can convert that generator into a list. So let's go ahead and do this now. We're gonna call this lengths underscore list, and that's gonna be equal to list, so we're gonna convert the generator into a list, lengths two. And now I can go ahead and print off that data. And notice I have the exact same result. So what is the map function allowed for me to do? It's allowed for me to call the single function repeatedly now throughout my code. And I can do it with just one line now. So I don't have to have a function that takes an input of a sequence and then iterates over it and then stores that data, then finally returns that data. Instead, I can actually just have a single function that's only gonna be two lines of code and then one line of code to call that function. So why have I shown you the, the, the map function here? There's a couple of reasons. One, and this is the most important, it is used frequently out in the wild. So once you leave, the, leave maybe the confines of a classroom or more structured code, you're gonna to start to incorporate real production ready code and you're going to have to be able to interpret and understand what that code means. You are always going to find things like map, lambda, et cetera, in production ready code. So you wanna know it just for that reason. On top of that, some people will judge your code if you iterate over something instead of using something like map. So in other words, if you don't have tight code, as much as it might seem unfair, someone may judge you for it. So if you want your cold code to look professional that might be easier to parse for somebody like a computer programmer or a data scientist, this might be something worth considering in your own code. However, it is not necessary. If your goal is just to write quick Python and do something, by all means, you don't need the map function. This is for producing better quality code that'll be easier to read for more experienced programmers. It'll make you look more professional and just your skill set and knowing about it will help you understand the code of others. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions about the map function, leave a comment down, in the, down below and I'll be sure to answer it.